Hi everyone, my name is Joanna. Thanks for joining me as I tackle common deep learning tasks and questions. Today's topic is on pre-trained models. There are many examples of using pre-trained models, but why choose one pre-trained model over another? So in this video, I wanna discuss the categories of pre-trained models and then answer two commonly asked questions related to pre-trained models. Number one, how do I use a model to perform a new task? Number two, I have a pre-trained network that expects a certain input size. How do I get my data and my model to sync? So first, let's start with pre-trained models and how to choose the right one. I like to break pre-trained models into three distinct categories. Category one is basic models. This is a great starting point for anyone just getting started in deep learning. Basic models tend to have fewer layers and allow you to try a lot of training options in less time. If you're looking for basic models to try, I would recommend GoogleNet, BGG16 or 19, or even AlexNet. Category two is higher accuracy models. Most networks will fall, fall into this category, especially newer models recently created. The main difference between the higher accuracy models and the simpler models in category one is that these models tend to have more layers, a more complicated network structure, and may require more training time. If you're looking to use a higher accuracy model, I would recommend ResNet 50, Inception V3, or Exception. Category three is models for edge deployment. So when you're moving to hardware, model size can be crucial, mainly because a lot of information needs to fit on a low memory device, maybe like a Raspberry Pi. So one way to deal with these constraints is to start by using a model which uses less memory. For edge deployment, I would recommend SqueezeNet, MobileNet V2, or ShuffleNet. So let's talk about bringing these models into MATLAB. Importing a model in, in MATLAB is actually fairly easy to do. I just call the network that I want, net equals AlexNet, for example. Once I have my model into MATLAB, I can see a lot of things about it. I can see the layers. This one's really small, so it's only gonna have a few layers but I can also see things like the input size. So this input size is 227 by 227. That's the size of the image that you're expecting to give the model when you're using the network. And then you can also do things like look at the last layer, which is gonna have some interesting things to it. It's a thousand classes that this model was trained on. So I can actually look at all of those classes. And you can see all of the, the different categories this was trained on, everything from a scuba diver to red wine to meatloaf, and the categories go on and on. There's, there's quite a few to look from. So let's try it. Let's try to use this model. So I have an image of, let's pick a dog, for example. This is going to be Sherlock. I'll show him. And we want to use this network that I just imported to classify what this is. So I wanna do net.classify and the image. The challenge here is that I haven't resized my image. Um, and as we saw before, the network wants this to be 227 by 227. So I simply just need to resize the image. Now I have the image in the right size that I can simply classify that image again. We see that this wants, this category to be Labrador Retriever, which if you look at Sherlock again, I think that's pretty close. So that's using AlexNet to classify an image. You can do this with any network really. So I started with AlexNet, but I could also bring in something like ResNet 50, which was another model that I recommended. However, I haven't installed this yet, but no fear, there's a link that I can use that will bring you right to the place where you're going to install the network. So the add-on explorer has lots of different things for you to choose from, ResNet, all of the other pre-trained models as well. I simply click install, and this will walk me through the steps of installing the network, which should only take a minute or two. Once I have this network installed, I can simply use it just like I used AlexNet before. All right, so that's bringing a model into MATLAB. So now on to the questions. I have two commonly asked questions about pre-trained models. Question one is how do I use a model to perform a new task? This is 
commonly referred to as transfer learning, and I'll walk you through a very simple process for how you can modify a model to perform a new task. When I'm starting with a new task, I like to start with a documentation and see if I can find an example that's already existing for the thing that I want to do. So for transfer learning, I can see that there's a pretty nice example here of just getting started with transfer learning. So I'm going to click on that, and then we can go through this example and kind of learn about how what the process looks like for this. The main thing that I see here is that we're going to be using an app to do the transfer learning process. And this is going to walk me through the steps of this. So why don't we go through this very quickly together? The first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm using a very simple data set that's going to allow me to explore this example very quickly. So I want to bring in my data, which really takes a second. And now I can use the app that they suggested, which is Deep Network Designer. All right, so Deep Network Designer is really a one-stop shop for working with pre-trained models. You can start with a pre-trained network. I have an affinity for AlexNet, so I like to use AlexNet as a very simple basic model to get started, but there's a lot of other models for you to choose from as well. So when I import AlexNet here, you're going to see that it has just a few layers uh, that we're working with, and I just need to modify that to fit my new task. So the data that I'm going to import as well, I can import the data from the folder that I just unzipped. So once I've imported my data, I can actually see previews of the images that it's going to use to train the, the network. And what we can see is that we're going to be using very simple images of maybe a screwdriver or a, a Rubik's cube or a, a flashlight or a torch, as they say in England, apparently. And um, and you can see the number of uh, different images that we have to work with for our for our test data set as well. So now what I what I notice here is that I have five classes of objects that I'm trying to classify. And I want to go over into the Deep Network Designer to change my network to fit that particular task. So if I zoom in on the bottom portion of the network, what I'm going to see is a fully connected layer. And this has a thousand classes for the thousand classes that we saw before. But I don't have a thousand classes anymore, so I need to change this. So I need a new fully connected layer that I can change the output size to the five classes that I now have. And I need a new output classification layer, because if you click on that, you'll also see it still has an output size of a thousand. So I'm simply replacing these two layers, removing the ones that I don't need, and then simply connecting the dots in order to complete my network. And that's it. That's how you navigate creating a new network. Uh, I already have my data imported, so I'm ready to go for training. So if we go back into the example, what you're going to see is that it's going to offer you different training options that you can use uh, to help you get to a, an accurate network more quickly. So here what we can see is there's a variety of different training options. I'm simply going to copy what they're doing in this example so that I have the best chances of success, but feel free to play around with all of these different, uh, different parameters and see what works best for your application as well. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is just increase the learning rate or decrease the learning rate very quickly and change a few of these other parameters just to give myself the best chance at success. And then I can close and start my training. So we're going to speed this up as you're watching this so that you can see the training in a short amount of time. But what you're going to see is that in a very short amount of time, even with a small CPU laptop, I can get to an answer within a minute or two. Okay, so once I've trained my model, I can export it back into MATLAB and now I can use it to see whether or not the training worked the way that I expected. So I think I have an image here I can use for testing, and I do. So if we just look at this, this is going to be one of the MathWorks cubes. So I'm going to take that network and I want to classify that. I do need to remember to resize that image again. So I'm going to resize it to 
227 by 227 again, just to make sure that it's the right size and I don't cause any sort of error. Now I can take my trained net that I just trained and use classify again on the image and I get MathWorks Cube as the, the final result. So the example and documentation that we looked at is going to walk you through all of those steps. This was a very quick and easy way of just kind of going through some of those steps, but the documentation is going to go through that in much more detail. So I encourage you to check that out. Okay, so on to question number two. I have a pre-trained network already, but it expects a certain input size. How do I get my data and my model to sync? So we've already gone through this kind of exercise with one image at a time using I am resize. Now I want to do this for a variety of images and making sure that every single image that I'm going to run through this network is going to be the proper size. The easiest way to do this is to make sure that I bring in all of my data and change the data to fit the model. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. So let's just use the same data that we already have. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in all of this data using an image data store. This is a very simple and easy way to bring in all data from a specific folder, making sure to include all of the different subfolders associated with that, with that data as well. All right, so now I have all of my data in here. I can see that it has more than 72 Im uh, images here, probably around 75. And uh, most of them are actually PNG format. So that's just a very simple, easy way to, to, to bring in all of your data. So now we don't know what size all of that data is. That's, that's the challenge. And in order to run that through my network, I know it needs to be 227 by 227. So I wanna resize every single image, but I don't wanna have to go through individually and resize each in image one by one. So the easiest way to do that is to create something called an augmented image data store. And it's actually going to prompt me for the output size that I want. That's my 227 by 227. And then it's going to ask me for my image data store. You can use other different data types as well, but image data store is very, very simple to use. Now that I have all of my data resized, I can simply use this augmented image data store for anything I want. For example, my trained network that I created a few minutes ago, I can classify all of the images from the augmented image data store and get those results uh, fairly quickly. So I won't lo loop through all of these individually and verify that these answers are correct. However, you can see that all of these 75 images were classified in a certain way. That's it for today. If you liked this video and want to see more like this, please subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to learn more about pre-trained models or transfer learning, start with the blog post that's in the description below. It covers similar information to what we discussed today, plus more helpful tips. And please post any questions or comments in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.